the state of Texas and instituted an endangered child care program. Keeping them here is safer for everyone. The new Leatherface tells the story of the horror legend's childhood and troubled teenage years. But is it actually worth a trip back in time? I'll let you know in my review, but first, please subscribe to GameSpot Universe. We're breaking down TV shows and movies like Thor Ragnarok, American Horror Story, Mr. Robot, basically everything good. Okay, the first thing I need to get off my chest is that they didn't completely screw this up. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the most iconic horror movies ever, and it's not an easy task to make a prequel to that. Leatherface is a murderous hillbilly, he has a chainsaw, and he wears people's faces. What else really needs to be said about this guy? Plus, they already made a movie called Leatherface. It was in 1990, it's Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. It's a totally, it's a different movie. That's a whole other story. So the new Leatherface is totally competent and basically nothing else. It's, it's shot really conventionally, it's scored really conventionally. It basically exists to deliver one twist that it telegraphs so hard that everybody sees it coming anyway. And so you have to ask yourself, what is the point? Having said all that, it could have been a lot worse. It turns out Leatherface was a relatively innocent kid whose family was, surprise, abusive. The movie opens with his birthday party, he's a little kid, and the family gives him a chainsaw, and his mom tries to get him to essentially murder their neighbor who she thinks was stealing pigs. What kind of a gift is that for a 10-year-old? It's ridiculous. After an incident with the sheriff's daughter that I will not spoil, but it is pretty messed up, Little Leatherface, aka Jed, gets taken from his family, the Sawyer clan, and put in an institution. Flash forward like 10 years, and of course he eventually escapes with some other inmates, and they take this nurse hostage. Now the movie wants you to assume which of these escaped inmates is Leatherface, because when they enter the system as children, the authorities change their names I don't really know why, but it's part of the plot and they emphasize it really heavily when uh, Mama Sawyer comes looking for her son, you know, years later. If you're not paying attention, then it's easy to, to do that, to assume which character is Leatherface. A little bit of a spoiler, I guess, but there's a twist and the person you think is Leatherface isn't Leatherface and that's really easy to see coming because there's only like, three characters, like it's not a hard thing to see coming. I watched this movie with a couple of friends and we all saw the twist coming like 20 minutes in. I'm pretty sure you will too. The one thing I don't have a problem with is the cast. So all the actors are, are pretty good, especially Lily Taylor who plays Verna Sawyer. Verna? Verna Sawyer. Lily Taylor is really, really good as Verna Sawyer, who's Leatherface's mom. She does a really good job, like when she's talking to the institution, people, she seems like just a concerned mother and you totally want to let her see her kid, but then she's also the one who's pushing him to murder people with chainsaws. She's not really the best mother, but you can tell, you can see why Jed really loves her. Steven Dorff, yeah, from Blade. Some mother are always trying to ice skate up here. He plays like a crooked Texas Ranger sheriff type uh, who is really trigger happy. He also really hates the Sawyer family. I'll take all yours, Verna. All of them. Vanessa Grassi is really sympathetic as the nurse who they take hostage when they escape. You really want to root for her, although she also does that classic horror movie protagonist thing where she just makes horrible decisions constantly and you kind of want to scream at her to just run away or call the cops or whatever. To be fair, that's part of the genre at this point. And Finn Jones is back on the screen. Yeah, the dude from Iron Fist. These childish insults are getting tiring. He's not in it that much, thankfully, but he, he also, he doesn't ruin it like he ruined Iron Fist. So it's not, it's fine, it's fine. Good job, Finn. There are some other good things about it as well. Leatherface puts some effort into getting you to care about certain characters that probably wouldn't have been as sympathetic in a different version of this. It's also pretty shocking at times. There's like a really weird sex scene that I'll say flirts with necrophilia. It's not full necrophilia, but it's, it's gross. If that's your thing, you know, maybe you'll get more out of this than I did. Like there is a gratuitous sex scene and they're doing it in all these different positions and then the camera tilts down and they're just on top of a corpse. And you're like, why are they showing all this? Again, stylistically, it's unremarkable. 
And the main saving grace might have been that twist if it didn't telegraph it a hundred miles away. It also does that horror movie thing where like people from the asylum are like crazy. Mental illness is bad. Everybody's a murderer. It's a tired trope for horror movies, but this is a movie full of tired tropes. So I, I didn't, you know, whatever. I didn't expect anything, anything else. So should you see Leatherface? This movie doesn't really know what it is. It's mostly just a callback to better films. There's not even that many good kills in it. There's one like curb stomping thing that literally had me going, ah, but like that's one small part out of a much bigger movie that kind of seems to exist for no real purpose. Did we really need to know why Leatherface is such a bastard? I don't think so. If you're a diehard horror fan and you just have to see every horror movie that comes out or every Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that comes out, go ahead and see Leatherface. It will not ruin the other movies. If you're not, just go watch the original. It's a classic for a reason. Let us know in the comments what you think of Leatherface and what your favorite horror movie origin stories are. You can follow me on Twitter at Rogue Cheddar if you're really into necrophilia and you wanna yell at me for my bad opinions. Thanks. Brought to you by The Evil Within 2. The Evil Within 2, available now.